All right. I now call this special meeting of the governing body of the city of Divine to order. Um, my time is uh, 6.01, 6.01, okay. Uh, we will start off with agenda item number two. Uh, consider approval of council minutes, special council meeting minutes from December 18th, 2023. Can I make a motion now to move item seven to the beginning of the agenda? Well, we can if you like. I was, I was just going to go ahead and get the minutes out and then do it, but that's fine. Okay. Um, Missy is here to, uh, to represent Cactus Flats, and uh, both of her children are home sick with the flu, and so she asked if she could, if we could expedite so she could get back to them. So, okay, we have a motion. I'll second it. Debbie seconds. All in favor? Motion passes 5-0. All right, Missy, you're up. Okay, that takes us to um, agenda item number seven. Uh, discuss and consider recommendations from the Planning and Zoning Commission for the meeting that was held on January the 8th, 2024. Uh, item A, subdivision flat for lot one through nine, block two, NCB 140, Cactus Flat subdivision, phase two. Okay, uh, David. You got that one? Actually, this went before the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission, and they came back with a positive recommendation for this uh, <coughs> request for phase two. Misty, uh, you're welcome to comment further if you'd like. Okay, thank you for putting me first, guys. I appreciate y'all moving me up. Um, this is the same, uh, this phase hasn't changed from the master plan that was approved many years ago and approved not too long ago. So nothing's changed, it's just, just we're ready to go ahead and get it recorded and start building on that phase. Are you requesting the variance on uh, sidewalks as well? It, that was already passed with the master. Oh, for all of it? Yes. Okay, cool. Make a motion we uh, approve the... From my understanding, that was already done. I thought it was just for the, for the other houses, so... I, I'm indifferent either way, I'm just curious. Yeah, I thought whenever we had asked requested that back with the master plan that that uh, blanketed the whole subdivision. I have to move that Okay. Didn't make up for my cameras. It's okay. I'll be back in front of you if it's not. <laughs> <laughs> and how long ago was this decision made? Uh, like two years ago? Year ago? The original master plan was probably three and a half years ago. <coughs> and then we got it renewed or two and a half years ago, I guess, because it's good for two years or three years. Anyway, ago. Anyway, and then we got it just renewed back about a year ago. Yeah, about a year ago, right? For another, another three years. Three years. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And for, for just a, making the approval for them to start moving forward the next phase of their construction. Right. Yeah. Just so we can record that phase. And we'll have, to, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll have to check that out, Josh. And when the city approves a master plan, <coughs> it doesn't always approve the variances. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to look at that. Okay. So that, that would be my recommendation if you're going to make a motion <coughs> uh, subject to any variances that might be required or requested. Okay. Or can I just go ahead and ask for the variance? Yeah, go <laughs> I'll make a motion to accept the recommendation to permit the planning and construction on those lots for phase two, subject to variances, etc. I'll second it. Okay. All right. We have a motion from Josh to uh, to recommend approving the uh, the planning for the the lots mentioned. Uh, with the exception of, uh, say that again, please. Um, subject Pending. to variance, variances and associated okay. requests. Uh, requests. Requests. Subject to variance. Okay. That's a good subject, one. Request. subject to variance requests. Okay, and I believe Debbie seconded that. Okay. Any further discussion? No, sir. All in favor, please raise your hand. Motion passes 5 0. Favor, just wait on a second so I can announce the, the motion and then we'll second it. Please. Okay, thanks. Okay, thanks, Misty. Take care of everybody. Good luck at home. Yep. Okay, now we'll go back to agenda item number two. 
uh, consider approval of council minutes from the special council meeting December 18th, 2023. I didn't see anything. I didn't either. It all looked good to me. I'll make a motion that we accept the mean, excuse me, accept the minutes for <coughs> special council meeting December 18th, 2023. Okay, we have a motion from Debbie to accept the minutes uh, December 18th. Second that. We have a second from Michael. Any further discussion? All in favor? Motion passes 5 0. Agenda item number three discuss and consider ordering a general election to be held on May the 4th, 2024, for Alderman for District number one, District number three, and District number four. They do this every election, right? I mean, this is the standard. Pretty much a rubber stamp. Yes. Anything you, uh, Dora's got you listed here. You got anything to mention on that? Um, no, it's like Debbie's saying, it's just standard. We have to, y'all have to order and then do the notice so that way um, we can proceed with it. I'll make the motion to order a uh, general election to be held on May 4th for Alderman for District 1, 3, and 4. Okay, we have a motion from Debbie. Uh, to order the general election for May the 4th, as noted. I'll second that. Second by Michael. All in favor? Motion passes 5 0. Agenda item number four discuss and consider accepting the notice of election. More of the same. Make a motion to accept the notice of general election to be held on May 4th for the districts okay. 1, 3, and 4. All right, we have. We have a motion from Josh to I'll second uh, it. accept the notice of election. We have a second from Debbie. All in favor? Motion passes 5 0. Agenda item number five. Discuss and consider adopting a resolution establishing the city's intention to reimburse itself in the maximum amount of $2.5 million for prior expenditures for capital improvements from the proceeds of tax exempt obligations and other matters in connection therewith. Uh, where did David go? I guess he'll be right back. Okay. Is this for what we've paid out already? Uh, it's, it's a, it's kind of. I mean, it would come from the certificate of obligation? Well, it's, to us? yeah, to pay us back. Okay. Yes, but let's uh, let oh, David. Oh, I didn't know. Sorry. Yeah, let's should let David introduce it, and I think this gentleman will be speaking also. Your mic, David. I'm sorry. Okay, we're agenda item five about the reimbursement. Yes. <laughs> Last week we went to we made the, um, the council made the decision about to go out for a certificate of obligation for the 2.5 million to fund the um, groundwater storage tank. This is a, a process what we call letter of reimbursement. I'd like to call Mr. Ryan Cunningham up from uh, Sanco who can explain the process more articulate and detailed than I can. Thank, thank you very much. Welcome, Ryan. Thank you for having me tonight. As you and Steve, my colleague Andrew Friedman was here on Thursday. You went ahead with the notice of intention for $2,500,000. This is a reimbursement resolution which allows you to reimburse yourself for funds you've already expended and future. So it's just a recommended step in the process that it just gets cleanest this way that you go ahead and reimburse yourself from those proceeds when you go ahead and issue the up to $2.5 million amount. Pretty simple. And one thing it also allows us allows us to start the process now uh, in some planning right now. Instead of waiting until April for the money hits the bank, we can potentially use some funds we have right now in the other accounts to uh, start the pre-planning process. And then once the money hits the bank uh, in April, 2.5 million, the, right, the first check that we will write will be to the city to reimburse ourselves for the money that we spent out of those accounts. And it doesn't require you to reimburse yourself, but it gives you the opportunity to. So it's just a, a blanket way of doing it. We've done this before. Exactly. For other it's ones, correct? Standard. Okay, <clears throat> this is like our normal everyday. I think this is our second one I've been through. I'll make the motion uh, that we uh, adopt a resolution establishing the city's intention to reimburse itself in the maximum of $2.5 million for prior expenditures for capital improvements for the proceeds of taxes and obligations and other matters in connection therewith. 
Holy moly. <laughs> All right. Okay, we have a motion from Debbie to adopt a resolution for the, the reimbursement um, as no. Second from Flipper. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion passes. 5 0. Thank you, sir. That was easy. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Okay. Uh, agenda item number eight. I'm sorry. Okay, before we go to agenda item number eight, uh, the number of that resolution will be 1 24 E. 1 24E. Okay, agenda item number eight. Discuss and consider. Six. Six. I'm sorry? Six. Oh, my bad. I accidentally. We skipped seven. Yeah, that's right. We skipped seven. Thank you. Agenda item six. Discuss and consider transferring money from the general fund to the water and sewer fund to help make the bond payments. Um, Denise, it has you listed here. Or water fund we normally transfer to the accounts that the bonds are paid out of and it really doesn't have enough money to make that those bond payments and continue with our everyday expenses so we're asking that we are allowed to transfer some general fund to the sewer and water to help cover can we reallocate anything to make salaries instead of transferring it over to that fund because from my perception once it hits that fund it's untouchable and sort of stuck there forever we would only be transferring enough money to pay the bonds and then once sewer and water has enough money in its account then it will repay general fund okay that repay. all right so so basically right now then our, our sewer and water um, for whatever reasons, just hasn't hasn't made enough to cover the bond payments. Correct. Okay. Let's make sure everybody realizes that. We kind of knew that at budget time that this would be a possibility. Yep. Yeah. We, we sure knew it did. Wasn't a deficit then, right. so. And we're waiting on the other uh, rate study, I believe now. Well, that before we that before I mean, I, I, I'm not surprised this has happened right. since we knew it back a few months ago. Um, do we have to, when we make the motion, do we have to put the amount or? Yes. Request of 92,000. Approximately 92,000. Approximately, okay. I make the motion that we transfer from general fund to water and sewer approximately $92,000 to cover the bond payment to be reimbursed at a later date. Okay, we have a, we have a motion. For, uh, I think so. Um, Tom? Yes. All right, that works. Okay, we have a motion from Debbie to uh, transfer money from the general fund to the water and sewer fund to help make the bond payments uh, and later to be reimbursed back to the general fund. I'll second it. We have a second from Stacy. Any further discussion? All in favor? Motion passes 5 0. <coughs> now we go to number 8. Okay. Discuss and consider having the airport property appraised. Uh, Debbie and Josh requested. So, along with this, I would like to see us get the appraisal to see if the FAA will forgive us any of the uh, grant money we've uh, got from for the last 20 years see if we can sell this place. I, I don't know that it's reasonable we can get enough out of it, but at least we can make an educated decision and see if we can recoup any money out of that and maybe apply that to a water tower or a street or salary or any number of holes we've got in our, our budget. It's just an appraisal. It's not a requirement to sell. Uh, do we have an idea how much the appraisal would cost? Uh, no, sir, not yet. Uh, Reach out to the the person to the company that did the appraisal for our uh, acre behind the school for the uh, Warhorse Tower. I'm waiting back for for response on that, um, and we'll also have them do probably do the appraisal on the property for the city as well. 
but I don't have a number of what's going to cost for the appraisal at this time. How much was the appraisal for the the acre of land by the water tower? I want to say fifteen hundred for for the one acre. Yeah. So. Thousand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I would doubt that it would be the same price. I'm sure it'll be a little more. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> more acreage. But I mean, at this point, my opinion is the airport's never going to be self-sufficient. No matter what we do, it seems like it's just draining us. And I, I think we should. I agree. Okay, I don't know. We're going to have an earthquake now. But I agree with Josh <laughs> that we need to, to look at it and see if the appraisal comes in good at a de decent enough amount, um, our, our, what we owe on the, uh, if we were to pay back, it's almost 1.9 mil. So if, if the appraisal comes out, if we can break even, that's kind of where I'm looking at. If we could break even on selling and everything that we owe, blah, 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 <coughs> It gives what's on our budget for the airport two two hundred thirty, two hundred fifty, whatever is on the budget yearly for the that can go back into the city. Mm -hmm. Like it just goes right back into more streets or more whatevers, you know, water tower. It just opens up the door, I think, and gives us less to worry about. I uh, I couldn't agree with you more. The uh, you know, the airport's a really tough issue. It is. And uh, the new panel here inherited that issue. Um, <clears throat> you know, and, and of course we can go on and on about that. Um, if it's if it's feasible at all to, to sell it, well, yeah. Uh, uh, I would be very much in favor of me personally and, and also as a city because I agree with you, Debbie. It's it, uh, I don't see that in the fuel farm. Uh, you know, I just don't see it... Uh, making money without an incredible investment into it, and even then, it's a long shot, so. I, I, I hope I'm not taking away from the folks who do bring revenue into the city that leverage that airport. I, I don't mean to disrespect those folks or say that they're not bringing value in the city. However, they're not, definitely not bringing in enough value as far as tax revenue for us to justify continuing to pour this kind of money into it. And that is, except I've had a lot of folks reach out to me we need this airport, we wouldn't be here if it weren't for an airport. And I respect that. However, it just doesn't, it doesn't I don't see it as a good investment for us. But well, uh, questions, uh, you all were here, so was it ever discussed before, before we uh, used them in a domain on those hangers? Oh, we never, no, well, we kind of discussed maybe we should sell it, but it was kind of like a fly-by comment to sell. Is what I'm saying. We never did we? I don't think we. I was standing on that side of the podium shouting. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, you were shouting to sell. I, I don't remember us other than a side note. Maybe we need to sell it, but we never discussed hardcore until recently. I'd say in the last few months. So I just like to get. I, I, I agree. We need at least get the appraisal because we. We can't make a decision if we don't know. What if it's not worth that much? Then, well, yeah. you know, that tells us what we have to do. But, so now. but if it's yeah. more, then okay, maybe that'll give us a game plan. I, I just want to know. For the sake of information, uh, I remember one of the early meetings we had, you know, and Hap Squires, who's the, uh, the chair of the Airport Advisory Board, you know, before those hangars were purchased, it was fairly close to paying for itself and then we go and buy a million dollars worth of hangers and therein lies the problem. Okay, now we got to find a way to, to help pay that loan uh, and even then all you're doing is paying a loan for something, you know, that's, that's, that's an albatross. Um, so it's kind of putting that out there, but yeah, if it's feasible at all to sell it, and, you know, hopefully we'll remain in an airport, but uh, you know, you have tenants out there, but there's things that, I mean, very early stages. Uh, I, I'd say it's worth looking into. The extra hangers that were bought, they were bought how many years ago? Four years ago? Is no, it's a uh, year, year and a half. Yeah. The first two right were the like election. a year and a half, and then it's been almost a year since the last two. Yeah, three, so, sorry, three. So three hangers, uh, the city used eminent domain. 
in order to purchase those. And then I think another two, or was it three, that we bought from the tenants that were already there uh, to, just to make it an even million dollars. But it's kind of what happened. We, we bought uh, a couple of the hangers first. I'm trying to, who, who, who did we find from? East Step first. East Step first. And Mayor Herring was Mayor. And who? Mayor Herring was, was Mayor when we did that one. And, and that was when uh, Mayor Herring was here. Mm -hmm. Bill Bain. So those were bought before the CFO was, yes. was obtained? Yes. They went, they went through the right grant. Two of them went through the right grant. So then the CFO just applied just to 8A and Hangers 10? No, no. Red coins. Red coins. Okay. Okay, so it's just one more that was purchased. Okay. The first two were purchased with the ramp grants. Two were purchased with ramp grants. Okay. And with the CFO, we purchased the three and then before we got those three, we had purchased one other one. Right, okay. Yeah. And the CFO was for a million dollars. Yes. Yeah. And how long ago Pretty was close. that again? The time frame? Uh, that was uh, 22, spring of 22. The, fi the finalization of everything. Yeah, somewhere in that oh, Bill Herring was still married. I was, he well, wasn't married. No, no, no. That was just right before the that, election. Yeah, we those couple months before the election. Was. Then we got the CFO. Oh. For the other four. Yeah. All right, I'll make a motion that we authorize the city administrator to work with staff to acquire an appraiser and work with the FAA to begin conversations to see if we can get any forgiveness on FAA grants. You, you want, want to, to combine appraisal, those? Not just an appraiser. Should you just do the appraisal? Well, okay. Find an appraiser throughout the field of appraisers and make a decision on getting an appraisal based on best quality of work and price. Okay, we have a motion from Josh, uh, basically to have the airport property appraised. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll second that. Yeah. Okay, we have a second. And uh, before we proceed, any further comments, discussion? Right I just, me, my opinion is, I just want the citizens of Divine to understand that the decisions that are made are made at this table, you know, and they can affect the city. Um, not the city employees, but the city itself. I mean, I think that was a bad decision when we bought those, really, and it, look, look where we stand at now. Um, but, man, I'm in with that second with Debbie and that first. I mean, let's get an appraisal on it. Let's get rid of it, man. Good enough. I mean, they already know how much we owe, so if they're thinking 2.5 million, they're gonna say, "Give me that one." You know, I'll buy for what y'all owe it for. This is a well, just remember, just remember, it doesn't mean we can sell it. It just means it's first well, step and see if it's, even, if, if it's even feasible at all. Okay. Sure. Flip or anything, Stacy. I'm in agreement with them that it looks okay. like to have this information. Okay. All in favor? Motion passes 5-0 and have the airport raised for sale. Okay, just, uh, agenda item number nine, in the same vein, uh, discuss and consider the proposal for possible action for aircraft hangar rental. Uh, David, you're up. Yeah, since last Tuesday's uh, city council meeting, with the authority to go ahead and start negotiating on the hangar rentals, I've had a lot of people contact me regarding uh, hangar 10, 10 primarily. Uh, there's about three people that's interested in that. One person wants just the first four hangers in the front, and the other one um, perhaps wants the back, and then there's one individual that wants the entire hanger, who's a construction worker, who wants to uh, have the rent at a little bit less, uh, lower rate, and then fix it up uh, and remodel it uh, his own, uh, on his own, according to the standards that we have. So um, we don't have any solid numbers yet. They're all still coming in. Uh, they're still looking at the, the work that needs to be done. And um, that's where we are with the uh, proposals on the hangers. One proposal I did have was $2,000 a month for hangar 10 on the front first four stalls. But other than that, uh, like I said, there's still some more proposals out. Well, we turned that down over a year ago to someone else who offered $2,000. I thought it was less than that. No, it was 2000 I thought it was 15 Well, he said fifteen to 2000 because we, when we were talking about 2000, he was like, okay. But I'm just saying we turned that down. 
Well, the dollar, so you're referring to the dollar amount? The dollar amount, yes. Yeah. I'm not okay. I'm not turning down the fact that someone wants to, to remodel themselves. I'm, as long as it's a code, we don't, uh, I don't care. But um, that dollar amount, we've already turned that down previously, just saying. I would ask as you're negotiating these things, uh, we had the FAA out here at an airport advisory board, well, it must have been six or so months ago. It was right before we had these negotiations with uh, uh, folks trying to lease this uh, hangar, but they, they were giving comparable prices for uh, per square footage for Australian hangars. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have, I don't know if you have access to that information. I think I have some notes still. I can pass them over if you need them. I think I do too. We'll I'm sure Debbie has better notes than me. Okay, but that would be fine. And also, uh, I have contacted some of my neighboring cities that just have aircraft hangars, but um, I want to assume that their hangars might be in better condition than ours, so um, the real rate may be just a little bit less. But yes, I have, do have some comparisons uh, for the area. But uh, as we know, since an airport is doing construction right now, so a lot of people are looking for uh, additional space. So a lot of them are willing to come in and take the hangers, like I was saying, uh, at is the $2,000 offer was just for the first four hangers on the hanger chain in the front. So it would still leave the back. Uh, but yes, that's where we are right now. No, no solid, no decisions, of course, no solid offers. Right. And then the, uh, the other thing to consider too, uh, I believe the offers were just for one year. So, you know, depending on what's going to happen at Stinson, you know, they may just revert back to where they were. Uh, clearly a lot more traffic there, but I, but I don't know the scope of their business exactly. But the rates that we have compared exactly like David said, and I was going to say that, that was, you know, for something that wasn't in need of incredible repair. Right. So, and so we have, as of right now, I believe we have two people interested, uh, that are uh, three to take it as is. Two for Hangar 10 and uh, one for Hangar 8. Eight, 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 eight Alpha. Oh. Good, yeah. Two, so. two for hangar 10 and one for eight, uh, hangar 8. Oh, okay. Eight alpha. Yeah. Awesome. So, so they're, all, they're all willing to take them as is? No. Yes. Oh. Yes, ma'am. So. No, I thought you said you only had one that will, will take it as is. One no. take, well, actually, two will take it as is, hangar 10. He's gonna, if the second person takes it as is, he's going to, if the const construction worker will improve it as he goes. Uh -huh. But he's still going to take it initially as is and move in. So it'll be two. One ticket as is, one ticket as is, and, and, and rebuild. Well, one's not going to rebuild. One's Correct. just going to take it the way it is. The way it is. Okay. That'll be hangar eight. No, it's already hangar ten. That's ten also. Right. Oh, the first guy. Okay. I right. got you. Okay. But the, the gentleman is a construction worker that wants to take, he, he actually wants the entire hangar, and he wants to uh, do it <coughs> for, uh, potentially for a long term contract, and as a result, lower the rental fee and fix the place up over time. Thanks, Dave. So is the gentleman that wants to fix it up, <clears throat> that money's coming out of his pocket or is it coming out of the, the approval that we had already for the, it's going out of his pocket, all right. It would be right. his pocket and it could yeah. possibly offset the money that yeah. we were about to pay. However, he clearly would expect it to be reflected in his rent payment. So it's not like he would, we don't know the amount on him just yet, that's, that's still in the works. Uh, you know, so we don't have a dollar amount. Well, I'm trying to look at the positive side the because if he's from Stetson and they're having issues over there, maybe he can bring some other people over here to see the other hangers that are available, you know? Yeah, well, that's not the guy that uh, oh. has, it, yeah, the I mean, the fellow from Stetson would take it as is, but he's not necessarily guaranteeing improvements. And, oh, yeah, and long term. All right. I guess I was dreaming. <laughs> well, it's just good to know there's uh, people are looking at it. Yeah. I mean, it's good to know that there really are people that want to rent it, or them, I should say. Well, finally. Yeah, it's yeah. great to know. Yeah. But just keep up. So, Let us know how it goes. Like, so we'll keep that, plugging away. Yeah. yeah. Sounds great. So, uh, any further discussion on that item? It's mainly informational. Okay. We'll close that item. Go on to number 10. Uh, discuss and consider street priorities for fiscal year 2023-2024. Okay. Uh, we need to start the process. Uh, and, and council needs to decide what kind of process you want to go with uh, and what have you. 
So uh, uh, Pete, our public works director, uh, has prepared a list of his recommendations and, and things. And uh, so I thought that would be a good starting point since he's the one that's out in the out and about all the time. He's been with the city for an awfully long time. Uh, he knows which streets have a single layer of uh, asphalt, those that don't, and uh, so forth. So uh, Pete, what you got, buddy? Okay, um, on the top of my list, I think one of them that needs to be done because there's a lot of school traffic would probably be zigzag. Mm -hmm. that, that one really needs it. That would probably be reclaimed and redone. Can you turn your mic on, Pete? Can you turn your mic on, please? Okay. Sorry. Don't do any longer. Okay, mm -hmm. the second one would probably be Winnie No. That would be like a chip seal. Uh, just to get it, you know, back in shape, it's, it's getting pretty bad. Um, East Malone. Chitsio. East or, or west? I'm sorry, west Malone. Okay. Um, Webb is one of them. I'm going through this because I get a lot of work orders for off bows. Um, next one, Divine Drive. Oh, yeah. yeah. Drive. No. That, that would be a reason. That one's <laughs> That's 35 miles right there. <laughs> yeah. And West Coker. Oh. <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, figure out what the primary ones. Uh, Colonial. Uh, I would like to do a good uh, light bulb to Almond. To what? To Almond, which is a cemetery. Oh, road. the cemetery, yeah. Is that A L M A N? Yes. Okay. And, well, Crouch, I mean, that's one that needs to be done, but there's a lot of problems when you fix the back street. Is that because of the water drainage? Yeah, the water drainage. All right. It's been like that for years. So. Call me out you and I share. Oh, no. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> Sorry, I got Pete. That's all I have for now. I mean, okay, so I, I, I got some questions for you on this. Um, I don't disagree with you on any of the streets that need redone. However, we're putting lipstick on the pig on some of these. Uh, like Colonial, if we don't fix those drainage issues, uh, wherever that big dip is and it yes. washes out, if we can't get some large aggregate in there and put some drain pipes so the water can run under it, I mean, just, I don't know what the point is. The vine drive is very similar. If we, if we can't dig down a little bit and make that more of a spillway, yeah. which it sucks whenever it rains a lot, the folks have to drive up and down, but that way it's not washing everything out and uh, pouring into people's houses. You've got the same thing on crops there as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, we've been looking at uh, Colonial. Uh, there's a way for the water to run towards uh, towards the uh, East Davis. Yes, towards East Davis, but um, yeah, you know, property owners have to get permission to use or something. So there's people with a lot of trains we love. Yeah, we, yeah. we have to get East Davis or something for them to be able to push that water down. But it's possible. <laughs> Through one of those properties, you mean, right. alongside yes. to, to to do a like a drainage pipe through the property? We have one of those off of uh, Mockingbird, I think. No, what's behind it? Monticello. Monticello. Well, it goes Mockingbird to Monticello. Right. We have one of those. So, would we have the option to instead of putting a drainage line, instead of just a ditch with large aggregate in it? I don't know the proper term there, but uh, that way, the water. I mean, the water already goes there, we would just be streamlining a little bit. So it stops puddling at one house that built in that dip there that you know, floods every time. A ditch next to it. So right. you know, we don't need to put in pipes. I mean, everything's going to fill with sand no matter what. It would still run that way if you did that, yeah. Right, and that will also that reduces cost dramatically. Right. So we can hopefully... It would keep it from holding on the street. Yep. Yeah. And then we could hopefully get this done right at a significant lower cost, because I think JR's been saying one point something million dollars, which... Right. Yes. You can put some concrete pipe down a lot cheaper than that. Well, that's why we kept putting it to the back. Right. Because through this whole water pipe replacement, that road gets used a lot. Mm -hmm. And it's it, the trucks are just tearing it up. <clears throat> that's why we always put it to the back of the list. Put it to the back of the list. I mean, uh, it's possible. But we need something. East venture. Oh, it's bad. Yeah. If, if, if we're going to put lipstick on anything, I, I would prefer we just do some, some of the ground up asphalt or something real temporary. We're going to have to do it again in a year if that's significantly cheaper than trying to uh, put an asphalt down. 
and then we can instead use those resources on something like zigzag or. Uh, you're you're still other other referring to Colonial, like Colonial Parkway. Yeah, okay. what I'm saying if, if if we if we don't have the funds mm -hmm. or the ability to address the root cause here, or if we don't want to address address it just now because there's so many trucks driving over it, okay. But I would ask that we put a very temporary solution down just to to mend it temporarily and save that money to apply toward other streets that do need it, like the or zigzag. Are you talking about how the county did the repairs on Colonial on the other side, well, on the county side, what is it, 57, I don't know what the number is. They did it, you said the ground asphalt? Yeah. They did, I, I think I told y'all, they did those pothole, the pothole wood placements, they're still flat. And it's been like two months. We can't say that about some other potholes. Well, I mean, that's lots of wash out in a big flood like this too, but. It didn't this last rain. Uh -huh. That's what I'm saying. That might be a good Band-Aid band -aid until we can do something else. You know, uh, as I look at streets, I spend most of the day today, David and I and Pete actually drove around a little bit too together. Um, my comprehensive look at it myself would be number one the streets that are traveled the most okay uh with, which you got zigzag um you got windy knoll uh divine drive down uh coker for sure coming off of 132 okay uh these are all thoroughfares a lot of people use all the time the entire city uses them it's not just the people that, that live on those streets and then with that being said for example windy knoll uh, if you were to to look at Windy Knoll compared to some other streets in the city, you know, cosmetically it looks okay compared to other streets, but it's not. And so these major thoroughfares, to me, we, we really need to protect and keep what we got. Number one, uh, before we go kicking the can down the road on other things and whatever, hey, let's keep what we got before it deteriorates even worse. And then we got much more expense to go with that. Okay, and then uh, Divine Drive. Uh, that would be just to East Davis, correct? Like, yes, like from Coker to East Davis, right? Because the rest of it is still going to get worked on. And plus that part, the north part of Divine Drive, that doesn't have base underneath. That was just recycled asphalt that was done 20, 23, 24 years ago. So, but at least Divine Drive, uh, because it, it, is in, it is in horrible shape. And it has become, uh, it's getting a lot of traffic now from what I understand. And it's going to get more. So that brings up another another point that I would pick on here. Uh, I don't like it because it wouldn't it wouldn't possibly affect uh, all of us the same way. But the areas that bring us the most uh, property tax revenue, it makes sense to put more money into those roads that would be Malone, that would be to buy and drive to all those brand new houses, and the one those brand new houses to sell better. We would want nicer streets in front of them because that increases yeah, the property re property tax revenue. Just that's a tough, that's a tough one for me. I, I kind of like, a, you know, personally a balance because property values are, are relative. You know, uh, a nice street in front of a $100,000 home is still keeping the property value or 80000 whatever it is, it's all relative. Um, you know, so uh, West Malone, we drove down that today. That's another one of those streets, just like Wendy Knoll, like I just mentioned, to where, yeah, cosmetically it looks okay compared to some other areas until you look until you look closely. I'm talking about as you yeah. drive by for the average person. So this is going to be another street that if we don't get on it now, uh, it's going to die, it's going to just get worse and worse and cost us a lot more money in the long run. It's just like not changing your oil in the car, you know, <laughs> you know, go ahead, don't change your oil and you'll pay for it later. Uh, so and once again, in, in, in West Malone, that's a highly traveled street. Just, you know, everybody goes around to Jack Nicholas and and on down, there's a lot of homes that live there, um, you know, and then uh, Pete uh, McAnally, that's probably the wor very worst yes. street in the entire city. Oh, yes. Okay, and I think we would owe it to them to get that street paved up yeah. to the... Uh, McAnally? Yeah. Uh, oh, that's first the Baptist, yeah. right? The, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no, that's the, the one where, where you, close off it veers off after the old carpet <coughs> office. Oh, that one. Oh, okay. <coughs> and it crosses the front boot. Uh, okay, and then I think oh, that was on the list before. We yeah, it should be. At the bridge because of something I don't remember. Yeah. Well, yeah. I drove around and I noticed a lot of the area over here at Zigzag <coughs> was paved probably not too long ago, but I saw between on Jameson Street and Curtis, I saw one section that's still old, but everything around it 
is 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 well, part of that it one section get redone, I think it never got ago. done. You two, know, it just part, two, it wasn't that long. It ago. wasn't that yeah. long. It was part of zigzag, but not all of it. Yeah. Like not well, some of the the smaller streets yeah. got done, but I noticed one of them. I think it was Curtis Street or Jameson. Uh, the new roads went cross and they went up, but they forgot the center. <laughs> you know, they, I mean, there's three houses or something like that, and I'm like, what? we drove around again. I drove around. I said, yeah, that's right. And look, um, I don't know why they forgot that. Yeah. So, um, you know, obviously we can't decide all this tonight, but a little bit more direction. I think we're all kind of in agreement on, on several things already. I think that's great. Um, so, so now on crowds, real quick. Okay, on Crouch. Okay, we obviously have, have drainage issues there. We always have forever today. You know, just like the spot we're talking about, Colonial Parkway. I moved here almost 50 years ago, and it was exactly like that 50 years ago. Okay, however that was planned initially, nothing we can do about it, you know. But, I mean, there's houses that are below the road there, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so, obviously, we can't do anything with that until we decide. And, by the way, uh, Danny Lawler and I are going to go... He wanted me to go show him that and kind of look at it. Um, it was going to be today, but it'll probably be tomorrow or the next day. And he might have some ideas too, but it'll probably be very similar to what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, there's nowhere else for that water to go. <coughs> and what even makes it worse, it comes off of Oak Ridge by the cemetery and it contributes also. So it's got water coming from three directions to make that little mm -hmm. pond, you know. Uh, what kind of issues are on Crouch? Because it clearly deserves to be paved. Uh, but obviously, we don't want to pave something and then tear it up again. Yeah, that needs drainage. You know? uh, it needs drainage, drainage pipes installed now. Um, you're talking about that. Crouch? You're talking about by Windy Knoll? Um, yes. No, all the way down. I think the only the drainage on, it's on uh, Windy Knoll, that's the only drainage they have. But that's always clogging up. And I have a question. And let me know if it sounds crazy. But uh, so in Hawaii, the big H1 freeway goes uh, east and west across the island. It is, a, it is made during a big rain event to just channel a ton of water outwards. Mm -hmm. um, would you think that's crazy to make crouching into something like that? I mean, you're gonna have to really dig it down a lot, which I understand costs a lot of money, but that just turns into a big spillway, concrete reinforced, so it doesn't wash out quite as easily. But then driveways go into it, and that, that channels a ton of water over uh, to Wendy Nolan and into Burnt Boot. Is that what JR had suggested? Uh, I think it's just uh, building the street up. Oh, well, <coughs> same house. thing, dig yeah. down or build oh, up. Yeah, build well, up. so I don't want to do that because I already see folks on that street digging little trenches because yeah. water's coming off the street. Yeah. We're causing that a lot of places by building up on the streets. That's what's causing uh, like Lupe's house up there in your district that we're now the streets. Uh, Crown that's running water off in the folks' yards and that's flooding their houses out even more. Oh, yeah, it does do that. So, that's my number one concern is we keep building up and we're, we're causing a flooding problem on personal property. It's something we can look at Josh, to see what, what we can do about it. I mean, we tried it already, but we can look into that. But it needs to be done. Crouch is pretty bad. I get a lot of work on it. So Crouch is pulled around. No, it's not. It's bad, yeah. Material. Go on us all about that. Perhaps we can uh, find a consensus on some of the streets that were mentioned, okay. perhaps. If, if everyone's in agreement, we get those measured, calculated, and what have you, the price of asphalt, which, forgive me, I, I, I had a handout for that tonight, and I was, didn't bring it, but I, we can email it to everybody. It's just pricing that Danny gave. Uh, oh, so you got some pricing from Danny? Yes, ma'am. Awesome. So yeah. we know how much we can play right. with. Right. In other words, we don't got to, I mean, we have something to go by, you know, uh, our budget. You know, you can apply it to the budget and say, well, this street will be approximately this much and we've always add another 10, 15 percent, you know. Which what we've got to think from a couple of years ago to this year's, we should have like a like four hundred and ninety-nine thousand or ninety at least. Okay. So well, six fifty. Well, two hundred and sixty three this year's budget and two thirty six that's in the bank. That comes up to four ninety nine. Okay. Uh, I, anyway, that's, I that's what I'm saying. Depending on how much the supplies right. cost, right. we might get to do a lot of these streets, depending on how long. We need them measured, Mr. Pete. <laughs> well, I tell you what, uh, 
Real quick, let's just go down the list. Okay, uh, uh, would everyone be in agreement on zigzag? Yes. yes. No opposed? Okay. Wendy Noel? Yes. You can abstain, you live on that street. Exactly, but clearly, you know. Uh, Wes Malone, everybody? Yeah. yeah, I'm good with that. Okay, good enough. Um, Coker to libel to me is a no brainer. And we're just talking, uh, well, well uh, uh, Coker from 132 to Libel, where you have like all the stop signs. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. That's a pretty short section, okay, but it comes straight off the highway. I, I'm not as familiar with that one. I would like to let's make sure we're not going to flood anybody, anybody's house. I think, I think that's good. No, it's all pretty flat that's there. where the, the drainage starts on Upson. Mm -hmm. So it okay. can easily be channeled right there to Upson and then on down. Okay. So that's another street we're going to look at someday, but at least, uh, you know, uh, the drainage canal that goes by the Little League, uh, but at least it has concrete under base where it should hold up okay. But it's taken a beating. But, but once again, I think to me, these other, these other streets would be more of a priority right now. Um, so Coker to Libel. Uh, uh, Crouch, uh, it would seem that we need to have some more information. Yes, mm -hmm. we need to look into that too. Yeah. So somewhere down the line, we might have to try and find some money to do the, the preliminary work before it gets resurfaced. Okay, McAnally, we're yeah. to divide. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm okay with that, but we need to look at that bridge first. Okay. Yeah, if it's downstream of Burnt Booth, which is about to get worked on, it's not that heavily used. Um, I, I'd love to see it redone, <coughs> but priority wise, I don't. I don't know where that racks and sacks. Well, okay, but it's uh, it'll have water across it when burnt boots flowing, and then there's there's water crossing there. It's they even Is have that a gate that you put up. Huh? The whole street you're looking at from. No, that's from actually just part of it. A very small part of it crosses burnt boot. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you turn on, I guess I think it's Jameson. Yeah. Okay, All right. That's between uh, 173 and Jameson, okay. probably. I mean, it's a very small section, but Mackinac, the entire street, when you cross Jameson, is just as bad. Yeah. There so was a part of it, though, I think we did do a few years ago. Well, I, I That's was, why I'm saying, I, I think I don't, there I was something about, about, think about the bridge, or was it maybe the year that we didn't get anything done? I don't It, it could have been planned to have been done, it, but it no, been I don't believe list, it but, was done. And then, uh, <clears throat> you know, um, was everybody okay on McAnally? Yeah. It's, it's a okay. small port. Well, yeah. well it, it's, it's not it's a all long ideas, street, yeah. but it goes, it'll cross Jameson too. I mean, and they're both the same. Mm -hmm. Go drive uh, down that street. Yeah, it's that fun. It's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, from uh, 132, I mean 173, all the way down the road. Right. Yeah. Right. And, uh, and then uh, I mentioned the, uh, Probably it'd be probably about two thirds of Divine Drive to get to East Davis, okay. And then after that, we got to, we would have to wait for the construction to be finished and all the infrastructure that goes in. So uh, just that, Coker to East Davis, yes, not not all the way to Colonial. Right, that'd be a waste of money. Yeah, that's what it. That was another one that seems aw awfully awfully bad. Uh, it is. Yeah. So, and, and I would prepare for that street to be even more traveled once everything gets all done. With all the new houses? Oh, yeah. Right, right. And then we're getting people complaining about speeders on those streets as it is. So that, that means a lot of people are, are cutting through and forth. And, and of course, you know, I remember I remember years ago we, 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 we went and paved some streets. We actually got some complaints because they were they were resurfaced and people were driving faster. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's one of those things yeah. that you, and I, I was Colonial yeah. Parkway before you got the stop signs. It was Colonial Parkway before you got the stop signs. I said, I wish you would have left it the way it was. Nobody would drive fast. So, well, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. So, and then uh, we have Webb. Uh, if if y'all don't know, Webb is a very small street. It it, it isn't in great shape. It's it's uh, actually down the road from my house. Very very small street. This is from Webb uh, Ross to Fullerton. <clears throat> The yes. 30, 31 seven, on the way it's 31 yeah. 7, 6, 4, yeah. 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 It actually got resurfaced not too long ago, but there's been a lot of damage by yeah. putting the pipes. When they put the water line down, there was 
dead yeah. straight center. Mm -hmm. yeah. It wasn't on the side. No, that was already there. That was already there? That was already there. That wasn't by Chromex this, this go round. Oh, the sewer line was, yeah. yeah. So it was the sewer line or the water line? Sewer line. The sewer line. The sewer line. The sewer line? Yeah. 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 And, and right. it never really got quite repaired properly. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, I mean, I know it's by my house, but that would be a question mark for me because there's just not very many people who live on it or, uh, or, have, or drive on it. Or we could have it, um, have it find out how long it is. I mean, if it's really a short distance, it, it could yeah, be on the list. It's less, than, it's less than a football field. I'm sorry? It's less than the football field long. That's what I'm saying. Oh, if yeah. it's, much, it's, if it's a short, short distance yeah, and it short. doesn't really add to the budget, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It could very well fit on there and then maybe it'll make people happy. And uh, did I leave ending off? I, th I think we're going to wait on the Colonial, right, to see if something we can do there. Uh, how about we start with there and we get some numbers? Uh, you know, and then everybody, then everybody kind of go back in their district. I'm and sorry? What, approximately 0.4 miles? Oh, okay. Oh, it is that long. Yeah. Just, yeah. But it's not very, it's not much driven, I guarantee you that. Okay. Anybody who lives on Fullerton, they, they come off of the, the highway right there by my house. So. Well, if you um, go get some get the tape out there and see what it measures up to. Okay. Because you never know. It could be, we can do all of them. I mean, we don't know until. Exactly. Exactly. I think that's a great place to start. Um, I'd love to do all of them. Great place to start. And then uh, also, I spoke with Commissioner Lawler again the other day. Okay, uh, He says, yeah, um, he would like to have the scope of what we're doing, an idea, because he has to get everything approved at Commissioner's Court. And that way he can show them something in black and white and, and what's involved. So, And he's ready to... Uh, That'd be great, because yeah. we know they're going to start in spring or summer. We, well, need, the, we right. need the warm weather to do it, so. Right, so, so the other thing we have to remember is, is the sooner that we act, uh, the sooner he can reserve the equipment, yep. because uh, that stuff is shared by, each precinct in the county doesn't have its own equipment. They, they share the equipment and it gets passed around and they, they get dibs on it, however, whatever method they use. So the sooner we come up with something, the sooner we can lock something in. All right, Pete. Tomorrow morning, first thing, we'll have another special meeting Friday. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. That's great. So we can put this on February's meeting then. He should have it submitted. In one way or another. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'd love it. In I'd one way or another, it. we would definitely have it on February's oh, meeting. Oh, we can get something done. Okay. Thank you, Pete. Thanks, Pete. Appreciate it. Thank you. I'll come hold the tape measure for you. Okay, everybody good? Yeah, good. Okay, we're going to close that item. We're going to go on the agenda item number 11. Discuss and consider approving a contract with the Divine Volunteer Fire Department for building inspection services, with the VFD being the primary option and with Bureau Veritas being a secondary option, at the discretion of the permit requester, and with the Divine VFD being requested to maintain all requisite State of Texas uh, records. Records and certifications. That must be what it is. Yes. So, um, as you're aware, we've been in negotiations with the Divine Volunteer Fire Department. Mr. Kate uh, has been in contact with the Fire Department uh, representative, and I believe we come to an agreement on the, the language. Uh, Chief Atkins, you're welcome to come up to speak if you like. And um, we're refining the language. I believe we have a happy medium. Yeah, um, I'm, well, I can't tell. Yeah. Mine, You're on now, yeah, sir. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, as far as that, uh, we, we got the language hammered out, and uh, we're ready to move forward where you are. A uh, couple things you might notice in this when you go through it. Uh, I, I specifically want to take you back to the pricing section of the contract. Uh, do, do they have a, a copy of that? Oh, okay, they don't get it. Okay, never mind, just right there. Uh, just kidding. Uh, basically, we tried to make it look as similar as what uh, you were already using. And we did that for the simplicity of being able to compare the two and trying to make it as simple as possible. Our whole goal in doing this is basically threefold. Simplifying the process, 
making it easier so people don't have to guess about what they're paying and all of this stuff and try to make it as simple as possible uh, to make sure that the inspections are being done correctly and make the town safer as much as possible. And then three, trying to keep things as local as possible. We like working with, with our local partners and, and uh, that's, that was our goal in doing this. Uh, when I was approached on this, I was extremely hesitant. Uh, I was extremely hesitant for multiple reasons. Uh, but uh, the more I talk with my team, my team is actually extremely excited about it, and uh, they are they're on board with this, and so uh, we're ready to move forward uh, if the city is, and if they have any questions, I'd, I'd be more than happy to fill this as much as I could. Is Tom good with the town track language? I'm, I'm good with it now, Debbie. You know, the chief and I, we've been discussing this along with, with David. Yeah. And there were some things in there that, you know, uh, as you all know, we can't identify anyone, right? The city cannot identify anyone, so we had to, to clean that up, and the chief, chief understands that. And uh, then the ownership of the uh, uh, results, we wanted that to, to, we wanted to own those, the results, the city, so we could use those. And the fire department, they were talked about uh, owning the process and going through the uh, inspections, if they could streamline it, and chief correct me if I'm wrong, any, any of the procedures they were using, we weren't going to divulge those to someone else, which okay. I, I don't have a problem with. I mean, we're not going to do it anyways. That's why right. we're, we're working with these guys. Most, so, most of the things we worked on, I believe uh, Mr. Kate and myself both agree, probably will never come to light, but sure enough, if we didn't cover them, that's, that's when they would actually come into play. But, uh, if basically, if we developed a process to do this, we wouldn't want our process to be out so we can stay competitive. And in the same respect, the information is yours. I mean, it's we have no use to hold on to that information even after this agreement is done. So uh, we had to get the wording correct for that, and, and, and Mr. Kate helped us do this. So. It, it's actually going to, this is going to be rare to make sure this is on camera, but it's been a very pleasure uh, working this out, to be honest. It's been very cooperative, and, and everybody's been at the table looking for the, the right solution, not, you know, how do we win or how do they win, what's the right solution for the citizens. And to be honest, in a situation like that, it's actually extremely fun to work. Well, in the, uh, in the caption here, uh, it says, at the discretion of the permit requester. So... So whoever needs the permit can decide who he wants to have uh, do the inspection? Correct. That's that's the, the, that's the, the, oh, go ahead. No, I, I was going to say, that's the way that Josh presented it. Yeah. yeah correct, Josh? Not. All right. <laughs> so the objective here is to allow it, you, the consumer, to choose which option you want. So if you if you just think your Veritas does a better job, you can choose them over the quality fire department. Or if you prefer working with them, it's, it allows folks to choose what, they, what market option they want. Also, maybe one charge, maybe your Veritas beats them price somewhere, then maybe you want to choose that. It could be they don't even care. They just want it right. inspected. Yeah. Like, and that, that it would fall to the fire department since that's our primary. Mm -hmm. You chances know what I'm are saying? That, chances are that's what will happen. Our, right. our, only, our only caveat to that was that if they choose Veritas, which I have no problem with, that they stay with them, or if they choose us, they stay with us throughout the process. And the reason being is oh. we will have folks who would intentionally try to get our inspectors to go against their inspectors, right. which I don't want to do. Uh, no, for the project, I would agree with you. Yeah. It, per project, per we project, have to yeah. stay with the whoever they pick. Yes, sir. Okay, I don't, I don't see a problem with that, and I can see you could have a problem with Correct. that. Yes, but yeah, let, let the client decide whoever they want to, and they probably won't care. They just need an inspection. Oh, I agree. So. so. And especially with the city's flat fees, it's not even going to make a, a, a factor to the city. So it really comes down to what's best for us. Right. Well, well, they may want to check time on this also. For a lot of people that need, they need inspections Absolutely. after they get permits, uh, they're ready to move on. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I would surely think that perhaps our, you know, our our local person could do it a lot quicker than Bureau of Veritas. Well, let's hope. Yeah, well, I that's, mean, that's part the of the reason. Right. And then the other thing, the other question I have was, uh, so, and, and being requested to maintain all requisite state of Texas, I guess, records and, and requirements. Requirements. Certifications right. and requirements. The biggest thing for us is going to be the licensing, and okay. uh, which, which we, we have to maintain and hold oh, Okay, so that just refers to you. Correct. Okay, got it. Okay, because there's a, we're missing some words. Yeah. 
just it just means that we're going to maintain our licenses and, and be good with the state so that they're not going to come down and practice in the head and tell us we're bad. Okay, so we've gotten the contract all worked out, and we've all talked about this many times already. So uh, sometimes great things move slowly, but we're going to get it done. Go ahead, Jeff. <laughs> chomping at the bit. He's chomping at the bit. I have something good right now. I make the motion. We accept the contract to volunteer fire department for their illustrious services serving the community as community members. Hey, I like that. <laughs> we have a motion from Josh to... Uh, uh, except the fire department and their illustrious services. Inspection services. Inspection services. I'll second it. Okay. All in favor? All right. Motion passes 5 0. Thanks again, Greg. Pleasure. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thanks, guys. Okay. Agenda item number 12. Uh, can I ask a couple things mm -hmm. real quick? <laughs> <laughs> Um, Go right ahead. Sure. I just uh, wanted to let y'all know that uh, the area of Divine that was without internet last week is still without internet as of this evening. Um, also, I've had some questions. Uh, uh, she just mentioned that uh, the people the without internet in District Three are still been, without internet. He's been right. all over them. Yeah. Um, I was told by one one resident who was a customer of AT and T that they aren't even like talking to them anymore. All they're saying is, we're aware of the problem, and that's it. Um, so I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Um, also, as far as the uh, the notice for the water outages that are going to be taking taking place in yeah. District 3, um, I just ha had some people wanting a little bit of clarification on that. Um, firstly, will all the listed areas be out at those listed times, or will it be some areas only without water part of the time, kind of like a rolling blackout. No, so when they shut down the valve, it's going to affect the, everybody that's listed on that sheet. Okay. The entire blocks of neighborhoods are going to be out at the same time. Okay. Um, due to the fact that where the valve is, and they don't have individual valves. Okay. Uh, to go back to your first internet, uh, I'm calling in the, in the, the internet representative here locally every day for AT&T, and um, they're saying that it's the location where they need to go in to fix the problem with AT&T AT AT uh, disconnect is currently where the contractor that cut the line is still digging and they have to get in to the same location basically so they're waiting for them to move down a little bit so they can get in to fix it. I'm calling them two or three times a day. I haven't forgotten about the issue. We're, yeah. uh, we're on I'm, the first name basis. I'm aware. So we're, yes, we're, right, yes we're, sir. I'm 100% yeah. sure on right. that as so, well. Um, we just want to let the people, let the citizens know. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> For the record, we're calling every morning, every day. Okay, we're, we're, thank you. Yes, ma'am. And, and of course they say that now, but they didn't offer that beforehand. Now it's, oh yeah, we can't get in there because of the other construction people. There. Well, and I believe um, some, of, some of the guys that were doing the construction weren't even aware that they had hit the line. That's that possible. Yeah. That's very possible. Yeah. 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 It's, it's not exactly a... That's a lot. That it's yeah. marked, yeah. Um, so yeah, as far as the, I have one more question as far as the blackouts. Um, is there any communication going on with the schools? Yes, I've talked to the superintendent, uh, Grand Jean. Uh, okay. they, they, have a, they have met, they have a game plan. Uh, yes, so okay. communication with the school was made prior to the notice to the okay. public. Great. So and, they, uh, they have uh, an action plan. Todd also called me yesterday. Mm -hmm. Uh, he's been through this before, uh, and, and uh, so I think the biggest problem he's expecting is where to play the basketball games uh, when that comes comes along. Okay. So they may try to go to neutral site or, or the, the other team, which they don't want to do, so they might try to go to neutral site. Um, but anyway, he's very well aware, and, and thank goodness he's been through it before, so he, he already uh, he's already ready to go, get that lined up. Okay. That was all. That was all I needed. Thank you. You're welcome. I expect the timeline in a perfect world with all, all, the, all the stars aligned is actually uh, two weeks. However, we added an additional seven days for the rain and the way the weather is just for contingencies for whatever what could potentially happen. So the services could be restored and the lines disinfected and everybody back on regular city water, um, pure city water in two weeks versus 21 days, but they need to prepare right now for 21 days. Great, thank you.
just so everybody who's listening or watching or will read about it, this is just for this loop of, of, of uh, streets, correct? This loop over here? Yes, ma'am. This is not supposed to. It's not going to affect that side. It's not supposed okay. to affect the, the rest okay. of the city. Just making sure, because that was like the first 20 questions I got about it. It's not even all of just three. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So uh, I just wanted yeah. to clarify it was not the entire city. It's this section over here okay. of and those then, uh, streets. Right. Also, David, so, so basically while they're working, there's going to be times where they must cut it off, okay, for connects and things. And then there's going to be other work where they don't need to cut it off, and then it'll be cut on momentarily, and then go back off or just completely shut off. No, no sir. When the hours that they gave, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. in the evening, it's going to be shut down. And then 9.30 in the morning to 5 um, in the afternoon on the weekends, Saturday and Sunday. They're going to be down during that time. They're going to be working as hard as they can to get the connects done and turned on right. after those hours. But there's not going to be intermittent or black rolling water. It's not going to be like that. It's going to be all shut down for those time, those blocks, this time, uh, those periods is blocked, and then they're going to turn, turn it back on. Okay. I so, did use the word intermittent today on yeah. my Facebook post. Right. Uh, <laughs> but what I was referring to was it's not going to be, uh, I'm glad you clarified that for me also, it's not going to be constant. Uh, the entire day and all this and that, right? just during those times. So no one will be having a Super Bowl party over there? Yeah. That so well, they can boil their water. <laughs> they don't have internet. <laughs> they don't have internet, they can't watch it. So anyway, so during the day, you know, they'll be able to, to, to shower and, and whatever, and then if they boil their water, you can use it for cooking and, and, and drinking. And very few people in the vine actually probably drink the water anyway. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so... Uh, but anyway, and then uh, there was also some other mention. It was, it was a great thing today about that people prepare for this. There's other things you may not think about, like like their ice makers and their and their fridge and, and and all the things that you know. And I think you had a, a good list of them, and they all went into that that flyer that's being put on their doors. Oh, good. Okay, so yes. it was very detailed, and and uh, I think. Are you going to post that also? It's already posted. It's there on, you go. It's on the city <laughs> website. It's on the city Facebook the page. Right. That's right. The flyer from the contractor. The contractor has okay, um, created the flyer that's going to be a uh, door hanger that's going to be passed out prior that's to the. Yeah, there's going to be some things that, that a lot of folks won't think about. And, and then hopefully this will make them aware. Also. Awesome. Thank you. You got it. I have actually surprisingly got compliments on how well uh, folks are communicating uh, the water issue. Uh, to all the folks that are complaining, well, we could just shut the water off during school hours and. Good luck there. Uh, to me, this makes the most sense when there aren't hundreds of kids in schools. Yeah, so we talked it over, of course, and the contractor decided that these hours are the most efficient to get it done and less uh, interruptive for the citizens to get it done. So uh, they're going to work as hard as they can to get it done in the most safe and efficient manner and get everybody back online as soon as possible. Done. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, good night number 12. Motion adjourned. I have a motion. They have a second. <laughs> All in favor? Uh, All right. Good meeting, everybody. Good yeah. job. Thank you. Goodness. You like that? That's nice. Oh, you got it. Really yeah. nice. Courtesy of